All right, everybody going live. Um, let me know if you can hear me. And I see a great group of people here. I see all our regulars. It's great to see you guys again. Just waiting for that. Do you, do you hear me? Loud and clear. Awesome. All right. Glad to hear that. So I see a lot of uh, a lot of your faces there that I recognize. Um, wow, it's been a while, guys, since we did our LFLs um, every week. We did a hundred episodes of those. Can you believe that? And um, and right now I see so many um, familiar faces in here. Um, yeah, it's awesome. All right, so we're gonna. I think what we're gonna do. Oh, we've also got Bruce in the house. So uh, Bruce is here and uh, he will be moderating and um, taking care of all of our needs. Bruce is loose. And uh, sorry, I was a, a minute late there. Um, I sent out the email with the wrong link. <laughs> so it uh, looks like, uh, did, did it, let me know guys in the chat here and we're gonna stop very, very quickly. Um, but just let me know how you got here. Did you get here from the newsletter, from social media um, or just, uh, you know, from, from YouTube, just so I know, uh, make sure everything is working correctly. Um, via email. Okay. So it looks like people have got the email. Great. Glad, glad to hear that. Good, good. Um, I was definitely worried about that because you know how, how things get. So anyway, um, let's, you know, there's a lot of chats here. Introduce yourselves to let everybody know where you're from. I see we've got um, you know, several hundred people here right now, about close to 300 people at the moment and drop a like. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to jump in and look at a couple of examples. We're going to talk about what's happening. Um, we'll have a little bit of a discussion and then we will take some time at the end, you know, where we you know, do questions and answers and I'll give you guys shout outs and we can talk and all that fun stuff. So I'm glad Andy's from the space station. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Oh, maybe the other space station. All right. So um, why don't we get started? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly share my screen here. And forgive me for being a little rusty because it's been a while. So you guys should all see my screen right now. And what we're talking about is the new beta. This is the generative AI, which you might or may not be familiar with, was kind of dropped in Firefly, where... Um, we were able to put text and create images from text. Now, this is not new. Um, a lot of you are familiar with things like Midjourney and um, Stable Diffusion, DALI. So the generation is, is not necessarily new. Let me just go back to my camera because I do want to set the foundation for this. Uh, so that is not necessarily new, but one of the things that is new is Adobe being able to integrate it inside of Photoshop because that's kind of the thing we've been waiting for. Um, so now, as of just a couple of days ago, yesterday, really, Adobe announced it and dropped it into the Photoshop beta, where we can now do this generative fill. So we can go from scratch and create images, or we can replace images. And I'm going to show you examples of all kinds of different things. We're going to look at reflections and shadows and, you know, what it can do, what it can't do. Some things it does really well, some things it, it doesn't do so well. But first of all, let me show you where you can get access. So what you want to do is go up, and I'm going to go back to my desktop here quickly. We're going to go to our Creative Cloud. And under your Creative Cloud account, what you need to do is click on Updates. And then you need to check for updates. Because sometimes what you see in here is not the latest version. There's an actual an update right there right now. I'm not going to run it um, because, you know, I don't want to mess up what we're doing. I've made that mistake in the past. But, um, but what you do is you click check for updates. It's going to ping the server and then it's going to show you the latest updates. So it might be there, but you just don't see it on your screen yet. And then what you want to do is go down to beta apps. On the left hand side, you'll see beta and then you're going to see Photoshop beta. Now, if you have never installed it before, you'll see an install button. You click that install button. If you have installed it, you'll see an update like I do here. You're going to click there and then you're going to choose update, which I'm not going to do now for obvious reasons. And that way you'll get the latest version. Now, when you are running Photoshop on your um, desktop, 
you'll notice that the beta installs beside Photoshop 2023. So that means that you don't lose 2023 and it should not inhibit or affect it at all. In fact, you can have multiple versions of Photoshop running or installed at the same time. You can literally run the two versions. So, you know, if you go in and you do the beta and then you just launch Photoshop like normal, it's not going to launch the beta. It's going to launch Photoshop. So make sure that you set the beta and then in your dock here, notice I've got a different icon for my beta and regular Photoshop to make sure you're running the correct version. The other thing is you need to make sure that you have a valid Creative Cloud account and you're signed into Creative Cloud in order to access that. Now I'm saying all this because I got a lot, like I sent, uh, I did a video yesterday and I got a ton of people struggling, you know, to install it, saying it wasn't working, etc., etc. And let's do all the troubleshooting. We're almost done with the troubleshooting. The next thing is when we go to do the generative AI, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have a background, I believe. Um, I don't think you can have it on completely on a transparent document. I may be wrong, but if that's something to check, but then you need to make a selection. Once you get the selection, now you have the ability to do generative fill. Now, of course, you know, we'll explain all this in a second. Now, if generate is grayed out, which some people also said on the comments on YouTube, hey, mine's grayed out. That's because you haven't verified your age. So what you need to do is go into your creative cloud account or your Behance and verify your age. And um, because, you know, for legal reasons, people under a certain age are not allowed to use this. So verify your age and that should uh, get around it. Okay, so that should pretty much fix most of the bugs that you guys are going to have and answer a lot of the questions we had on the setup stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is let me just open a couple of images because there's a couple of things I want to show you. And let's do... You know what, I want to show this one, but I want to show something first. So let me just go, I've got the library here somewhere. Um, let me go into the window and I'm just going to open up the libraries. And we've got access to these images. So these are photographs that we're going to be starting with. Now, there's a lot of different things that we can do here. We can extend, you know, the, uh, the boundaries of the image. We can do backgrounds, all kinds of stuff. So why don't we start here by changing the background? So I'm just going to use the image we've got here. And in the past, you know, it would have taken a little bit of work. But what I have done is I've cut everything out beforehand and I just put these on layers. And the only reason I did that is because what I want to do is just select those transparent layers. They don't even have to be transparent. I just need to make a selection. Um, and in fact, I saved that selection too. So let me just go under here, load selection. And there's nothing fancy about this. So I could actually ditch all of this if you want. We're just working on a background. And all I've done is I've just selected you know, behind our model. And I just saving you the time watching me make the selection. If you want to know how I made the selection, I just chose select subject. And then I just used the polygon lasso tool and just went around these window frames. So we can change the contents of this background. So let's have a look and see what we can do. So we've got this dialog box is going to say generative fill, and we're going to click on it. And now we get to describe what we want. What do we want? Well, let's change the background to, I don't know, let's change it to a jungle. So I'm going to type in jungle and then click generate. Now you're going to see the status bar. Now you're going to see this working in real time as I'm working on it. Now, the thing is, what doesn't really matter that much is the performance of your computer. As long as your computer has the um, minimum verification, uh, you know, there's minimum specifications in order for it to work. As long as your computer has those specifications, I need to stay on that window, by the way. And... Uh, then it will be fine because all of this is done in the cloud. So what's more important is a decent internet connection. So we can see here, it's taken all those areas now and it's replaced it with a jungle. Now, when we create, what we do is we get three variations and we can click on the different variations. So there's three different options. Now you'll also see this at the bottom here, this little bar here will also give us the ability to go in and change it in different options. So what happens is when we create this, we now have what's known as a generative layer. And this layer is tied to the keyword jungle. And it's also tied to that selection. If I hit the older option key, you can see there's the mask. That's the transparency or the selection that I created in the first place. So it's going to replace everything within that area now. And so we've got a jungle and we can see in the prompt, it shows us what we've done, but we can change it. Why don't we change it to a beach? 
and we're going to hit generate and see what happens. And one of the things I notice, I have to stay on this screen. See that bar is going like that. If I click on another screen or I click somewhere else on another application, it doesn't have background processing at the moment. So we'll actually pause until I'm back in Photoshop. So that's just something to be aware of, something that I've noticed. All right, so let me just bring up the chats here. And once again, you know, while I'm away on the chat, notice that that is not processing. So let me go back onto the main image. There we go. And we've got the beach. And we've got some different options here. And we can say, hey, this is kind of fun. All right, so we can do different things. You know, we could do a specific city. Let's do Paris. And we're going to hit generate. And I mean, you know, in the past, I mean, we could have done this, right? We could have just dropped in an image in the background, um, you know, it, into that transparency. Yeah, we could have taken another photo and dropped it in there. But one of the things we would have had to have done, we would have to look for the photo. Let's look at, you know, here's another shot and here's another shot. One of the things I love is it didn't just go cliche and give us the, um, you know, the Eiffel Tower or something very cliche. So... So this is kind of nice. So we've, you know, got different things that we can do here. We're doing Paris. Let me do something else. Let's do a countryside. And then we'll look at a different feature that we can do. So we just drop in a countryside in here really quick. And someone's asking, is this photography or digital art? Well, it's technically it's retouching. It's AI assist retouching is what we're doing at the moment, right? So um, you can start with your photography and, you know, uh, one of the things, because I did get a lot of comments with people, you know, um, asking <laughs> Bruce is like, try Godzilla raging through town. Um, yeah, maybe we could. <laughs> um, let me just look at the different options here. But yeah, so one of the comments I got from a lot of people uh, were, well, is this photography? Well, a lot of people use Photoshop rather than just photographers, digital artists, uh, retouching artists, uh, visual effects, um, digital artists. So there's a lot of things. So it really comes down to, you know, when you're retouching, is that photography? Is that retouching? Is it digital art? Because I know, you know, I used to work in magazines as my first job in this industry. And, um, you know, I used to have to recreate. I had to retouch and, and, you know, I had to literally recreate different parts of the photo from scratch. And that's actually how I got into digital illustration. So at that point, am I retouching? Am I illustrating? Is it digital art? Um, you know, call it what you want. And, you know, but we'll get into discussion about the ethics and how it affects us right after I've done just a couple more demos, because we do want to discuss that. Because it is a you know an interesting point for a lot of people. All right, so one of the things that's interesting here is once I've created a few of these prompts, notice that this prompt here on my left hand side saying countryside, but it's still called jungle because it sees this as the jungle layer. All of the ones that I've generated are all saved here inside of the properties panel. And if you get one and you just feel like you know hey this one and this one actually looks like. Hawaii, it looks like, or actually it could be Laguna Beach too. Um, so we go in here and if you don't like something, you just click it to get rid of it. Now, here's the thing. All of these images are generated images. These are not taking photographs and cutting out bits of the photographs and compositing them. The AI is actually recreating these photographs. So every image you see here is completely unique. It's never existed before. Now it's been influenced by the other photographs and it's been trained by those. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But let's continue a little bit here. Let's do the countryside. So why we're in the countryside, I feel like, why don't we try to do something with our model? So I'm going to make a selection here and she's definitely dressed for the city. So let's see if we can dress her more for the um, the environment that she's going into. So I'm just going to make a selection around here. I'm going to hit the ultra option key because I don't want the arm to be included. So it's very important now that selections don't have to be good. Your selections, in fact, should be loose, but you definitely don't want to select areas that you don't want to change. Like I don't want to change the arm. I want the arm to be there. So we're going to use that. So let's see if we can change the clothing. So I'm going to click on generative fill and it uh, this doesn't always work too well, but let's try it. Let's change it to a plaid shirt and see what we can get. And uh, let me just put that properties panel back. 
And so you can see you can work from that bar properties panel. You see the progress bar working at the bottom. And let's see where we go here. Um, okay, yeah, we got something like a plaid shirt here. Let's try the second one. Looks a lot better. Third one's not a plaid shirt at all, but it's more of a safari shirt. But, you know, hey, this is definitely fitting where we are, you know, out in the countryside. So we don't want to be quite so city, right? And let's see if we can get a hat on her head. This could end up being really interesting. But let's see what we can do. Let's make a selection. And we're going to type in hat. I'm not going to tell any particular type of hat. But does anyone know what type of hat you wear out in the country? Uh, drop that into the comment. And if we don't get what we like here, we'll try uh, doing something like that. So let's see where we go. And, you know, maybe we'll get something good or we'll get something ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Beret is pretty good. We've got a second. Let's try a second one. You know, like a cheese cutter kind of thing. Okay. That, that kind of works pretty well. See how that hat's working? It's called a stovepipe or a Panama hat. We could try that. Let's try a Panama hat. I don't know if it'll work well because... Well, we'll see. Let's see. Sometimes very specific things. Um, the gardening hat is probably a better description because sometimes you get too technical. The AI hasn't been trained on some of those terms yet. So, you know, one of the things you got to understand is the longer that um, this is going, the more, you know, it's going to get better trained and we're going to start to get better results. Just kind of the same if you guys ever use MidJourney, the results are much, much better than what they used to be. And let's have a look at our variations here. Let's make sure our hat, let's just hit back if you don't see it. And then we can look at some different options. Okay, definitely. Let's go with that one. That's looking pretty good. All right, let's try something else. What I'm going to do here, because I just don't feel like when you're coming out of the city and now you're out in the country, I'm probably getting a little too carried away. We're trying to get around the fingers here. Let's see if we can change this to something else. Let's try a newspaper. And we're going to hit generate and let's see what we get here. And um, Brenda says a Bible. All right, let's see where we go here. And, uh, you know, we who knows what this result's going to be like. A Crocodile Dundee hat. That's an interesting looking newspaper. Um, wouldn't really call it that. There we go. That looks a little bit more like it. Okay, so she's doing a, you know, check in the, uh, if you're in New Zealand, you're checking the races. But yeah, if we look at this, look what's happened. Just to kind of describe or show you what's happening. Each one of these layers is being created. And these are generative layers. So notice that we can turn these layers off. If we don't like the newspaper, we don't like the hat, we don't like the shirt, or we don't like the jungle. We can go back and we can turn these layers on and off. We can regenerate these by simply clicking on them. And if you want a different result, just click generate. And it will regenerate the contents. You can change the masks. So you can, you know, include areas or exclude areas if you're trying to fix it, if it seems a little bit weird. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do in here. And once again, you can mask, you can change the color. There we go. That looks better. You can use traditional Photoshop tools. There's a lot of different kinds of things that we can do um, using that. All right, let's try something else. I've got another image that I want to try. So we're going to do something completely different and looking at completely different things. I'm going to open two different images here. Let's open this one and let's open this one. Oh, opening the other version of Photoshop. So let's not do that. Let me, as I told you, you can run both versions of Photoshop and there's the proof right there. We now have both versions of Photoshop running at the same time and let's not run Lightroom. Let me force quit that. Yep, quit, get out of there. All right, great. So notice we've got 2023 and the beta running at the same time. So that's, uh, that's how that works. So let me just quit that. And it's actually running on the other monitor, if you're wondering. Let me just show you. Yeah, so it was actually running on my second monitor. So I had one version of Photoshop working on one monitor, one working on the other. Okay, so let's do outcropping. And this is pretty amazing. So in the past, if we wanted to crop this photo and extend it, like, hey, what's down here? What's on the side? This would have been really difficult. So why don't we try this? We're just going to crop it. I'm going to make it bigger at the top. 
I'm going to give it a little bit more on the bottom. The results could be weird, but hey, let's just make that bigger. I'm using the crop tool. And now I'm just going to grab the magic wand. This is a great time to use the magic wand tool because it um, just works really well for it you know, just selecting white. It's a lot easier than doing the marquee. Everyone else has seen a demo is like using the marquee tool. And I'm like, yeah, well, why not just use the magic one? All right. So what I'm going to do here is I want to extend this. So this, by the way, this bar is new and this bar context sensitive bar is also in the regular Photoshop. Photoshop also got a, a, an update and we're going to choose the expand selection by 25. All right, we've got a good area. And I want to fill this now to expand this image. So I'm going to choose generative fill. If I want to expand it and I don't want to change any of the, um, you know, I, I just wanted to just, you know, imagine that there was more in there. I'm just going to hit generate without putting any words in there. And we're going to just see how that goes. Give that a second. And wow, we've got almost 600 people on right now. Um, so it's good to see all you guys. Thank you for joining us for the stream. I hope you're enjoying it. And don't forget, get your questions ready because we will be taking some questions in a little bit. Let me make sure I click over here. It'll pick up and boom, look at that. That's, I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty amazing. Could you imagine what it would have taken in the past to, you know, have, you know, clean this up. Content aware Phil's not going to do that. And let's have a look at the other options. There's an option number two, an option number three. And um, I think that that works pretty good. But what it's doing too, one of the things you'll notice is it's actually looking in context to what kind of environment we have. What kind of a city is this? And look at the reflection. See, it's matching like the kind of environment you would be in. It's saying, okay, let's do, you know, something that fits that aesthetic. Um, and I'm going to show you something of depth of field in just a second too. But what we're going to do is I'm going to create another layer. And why don't we do something fun? Like this just, I'm just going to create a dog. Let's put a dog on here. Let's just choose generate a fill and we're going to hit dog. And we're going to generate a dog. So this is good for people like me that always seem to, um, you know, I'm very, very good at um, cropping my photo, you know, too tight and not getting what I want. Okay, there's a dog. And uh, let's see what we've got for options for other dogs. This one looks a little, little mean. He's a mean dog. Look at him. He's like glaring at you. All right, let's have a look here. Oh, that one's a bit happier. Oh, we've got this dog. And, uh, and there's other ways that we can do this too. Let me show you something that's interesting. So I'm going to hit control or command T. Now I want a second dog. I'm going to put a second dog here. Actually, I don't even need to do command C. Watch this. So remember I told you this is a generative layer. I'm going to hold down the alt or the option key and I'm going to drag out a second dog and notice that this shows generated dog and this has got its own generative layer now. Now notice, of course, it's not blending in. I'm going to hit generate and this is going to create a new dog in this spot. Now, if you did want to move it, this would be a good place where you would use some of the traditional tools like content aware move. I can actually see that tool getting some love now. Um, and it looks like while that's happening, there might've been a question or two here. Is there an easy way to get your brushes actions, uh, from the public version into the beta version? Um, you could sync your presets if you wanted, um, or you could export and import your presets. But to be honest, I wouldn't, put all your presets into the beta, just use it for this new feature um, because you know you don't want to count on the beta for your for your assets and for your commercial work. Uh, can you use this precise selection, your subject, loose selection? Yeah, you can use the selection tools if you want. Um, and a loose selection is going to work better because it's going to give it a little bit more space to play around with. So there's the dog. Let's look at some different variations. All right, that one's a cute one. But this one looks more realistic. And one of the things I'm finding at this stage of the development, some of the, you know, things like people and animals and faces are not fantastic at this point. But if any of you have used Mid Journey, if you remember in December, they were terrible and now they're almost perfect. So, you know, these things can improve very quickly. All right. So let's have a look at something else because we want to look at a different uh, aspect of this. Let's get rid of that. 
And uh, let's look at something else. A couple more things I really want to show you. Let me open this one up here. Oh, I just did the... Let me choose open with I chose the other version again. Let me open in Photoshop beta. Okay, there we go. I've got my presets set to um, open this in the regular Photoshop. So let me just force quit that again. All right, so what about cleaning up? We're going to do some different things here. I want to get rid of some subjects, you know, like removing subject content aware fill. I hate to say it, but it's probably almost dead at this stage because <laughs> let me show you. Okay, so say we want to get rid of this person. Now, do you want to see what Content Aware Fill will do? Let me just show you. That's what you're going to give Content Aware Fill. But if we use Generator Fill, and we're just going to let this go, watch what this does. Andrew saying first dog was like, how did I get beamed here? Oh, that's funny. Um, Christina says she was trying to do a mouse. Oh, look at that. Got rid of it really well. And it did a computer mouse instead of a animal mouse. Yeah, I find that it does that kind of stuff sometimes uh, for me too. And what I find is when it doesn't give you the result that you want, uh, a little trick that at least has been working for me is I actually just undo the selection and I create and delete that generative layer and then just start to, um, I just create a new selection and then it just treats it completely different. So um, if you look at that, boom. Okay, so those are, those are pretty, those are pretty sort of easy. Okay, here's a tough one. What about getting rid of all of this stuff over here? Could you imagine trying to do this in the old days? Let's see what we can do with this one. I'm going to hit that and generate. And I'll check out the questions while this is going. Uh, Heather's asking, can it be used commercially? Um, not at the moment. It's not ready for commercial use. And the other thing is, at the moment, it's actually limited to 1K. Look at that. Boom. Amazing. So 1K means that it's limited to uh, 1,028 pixels wide and square. Um, so, you know, so the resolution is not as high and, and I know the reason for that is while they're training the AI and everything, it's very, very computer intensive. If you're sending high resolution images down the cloud, it's going to be very, very hard for, um, you know, for the servers and everything to process all that. All right. So why don't we try something? Uh, let's do something interesting over here. Why don't we go in here and... I'm going to create an archway, but I'm going to put in the word tunnel. Sometimes the word you're looking for is just, you know, it can be, you know, not, you don't want it. You want something just very descriptive, something very simple. Um, you know, you can put multiple words in and try and help it too. Those things help. But let's see what we get here. Look at that. We've got a tunnel or an archway. Oh, I think I like that one. That's kind of cool. And while we're at it, why don't we put in a, I don't know, let's, what, what happens if we put a wooden door in here? Can we do that? So right now we're generating. Let's see if we can do a wooden door. And we're going to hit generate. And see how that goes. Someone's talking about the good old days. You mean like last week? <laughs> yeah. Um... So um, Andy was saying the images are small. Yeah, that's because, um, you know, it's low resolution at the moment. Um, photo makers waiting for the bugs to get fixed. Uh, sundown time. Great for small illustration, illustrated, yeah, illustrations and stuff. Yeah. All right. So um, let me get back onto the image here. Where's my mouse pointer? Get over there. There we go. And boom, look at that. We've got a wooden door. Look how it just builds it in. It's 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 really amazing. There's a few distractions I want to get rid of. I'm not even going to look at the um, other versions of it. But here's a cool thing is if I decide, you know, I want to get rid of these traffic lights as well. I'm holding down the shift key. So we're going to get rid of distractions, but we're going to do multiple distractions at the same time. I don't know what this thing is. 
Um, quite often when it replaces something, it will replace it with something else. So it doesn't necessarily always just leave it blank. And let's do generate a fill here. And we're going to generate on these four different areas all at the same time. All right. Well, we're over 600 viewers right now. 620 of you. So good to see you all. Welcome to Photoshop Cafe. By the way, while we're waiting for this to happen, do me a favor. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and you won't miss any of my videos because I'm going to be putting a lot of videos out that's on YouTube there. Wow, look at that. Just cleans it right up. And also do us a favor and hit that like button because we've got, you know, almost 650 people now and only 122 likes. So hit that if you will. Um, Colin, if you use the new uh, remove tool on the girl with the red umbrella, does it remove her more cleanly than the content aware fill? Yes, the new remove tool works really well. I've also done a tutorial on that. Um, but I'm finding that the generative is working even better. So that was a question that Photomaker was asking. And, um, and we'll, get, we'll get to more questions in a little bit. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go out on a limb here. And I'm going to try and see if I can do something... You know, I don't know if this is going to work, but let's see if we can add some train tracks in here. Let's try that again. And we're going to generate and see if we can get some train tracks going. Angela wants her mommy. <laughs> uh, Robin wants to grow off the umbrella back. All right. Where's the love button, Andrew? And by the way, Andrew Kavanaugh, if you guys are not familiar with him, he runs the Photoshop and Lightroom group on Facebook. Uh, make sure you uh, follow him there. That's a great resource. And I post um, all my tutorials on there as well. Look at this. These train tracks. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Look, it even turned into a tram track where we went over that, that concrete. That is pretty neat. Okay. I think we're going to go with that one. Look, there's a little railroad crossing. All right, now I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your minds. You guys, like, like your minds are not already blown, right? But check this out. I am going to blow your minds now. Watch this. Let's choose wet cement. Because everyone always asks, what about the reflections? Well, let's check this out. So it's coming... And don't worry, I'll talk you guys all, um, you know, we'll, I'll have some encouraging words for the people that are getting depressed. Some people are getting excited. Some people are getting depressed. Um, oh, that's interesting. That looks like uh, every road in um, Pennsylvania. All right. If you're from Pennsylvania, just a joke, just a joke. All right. Let's look at different options. There we go. I like that one better. Um, and let me know how you guys are feeling in there just you know are you guys feeling how do you feel about this are you feeling encouraged are you feeling inspired are you feeling like this is a tool it's going to help you do you feel like you know this is the end that your career is over um just just tell us how you feel and i'm just going to generate here because i know you know i definitely have mixed feelings about it and um you know and at the end of the day you know my kind of conclusion on this is it doesn't really matter i mean it does matter obviously um but you know at the end of the day you know the toothpaste is out of the tube right it's here now um so there's there's a generative let's change it oh wow that's trippy look at that not quite what i was expecting but uh let's generate again i don't like any of those the, if, let's have a look just for a second over here look at these reflections this is reflecting this building look at it we can see the buildings in the background. These are all being reflected. And yes, even the door that I generated, the wooden door is being reflected. So, you know, imagine if you're doing compositing and um, oh, I just did cement. I didn't do wet cement. Okay, let's do wet cobblestones just to change this one up. So imagine, you know, you're, you're shooting, you know, you're doing a compositing piece. You can build your background plates. You can shoot your models um, over the top. So where I'm kind of excited about this is being able to mix my photography with this. So this can save me hours and hours of looking for stock imagery, um, you know, and trying to find the right images. Or maybe I don't have the right, right images, all those kind of things. And you can really just start to build up the background 
that you want. Um, where is it pulling pictures from? Oh, where do you pull pictures from and where do you store them? Um, these photos, are the, these pictures have never existed before. So what's happening, you know, before I've got another example, I'm going to show you with depth of field. It's going to be pretty amazing. Um, so how this is working is this is an AI engine. So basically it's a large language engine, you know, but it's for images. It's kind of like chat GDP for images. So what it's doing is it's an AI, it's being trained. It's, it's machine learning. And so this is looking at millions and millions of photographs and it's learning from the photographs. Now, what makes this different is using Firefly technology um, inside of Photoshop. What makes this different to Mid Journey or some of the other ones is that Adobe is exclusively pulling from Adobe stock. So this is not going around the web and grabbing everybody else's images and grabbing other people's or grabbing any copyrighted work. All the images is being trained on are from Adobe stock. There's 200 million images in, or 20 million images, something like that. I think 20 million images in Adobe stock. And so what Adobe plans on doing is actually sharing um, some of the you know the the money they're actually going to pay royalties or a share they're still trying to you know they haven't announced how they're going to do it but if all the contributors to adobe stock are going to get a piece of the pie so they're not being um exploited um so that's one of the things that's interesting so you know when the lawsuits and stuff you know do start happening that's one of the things that that is nice is the fact that it's doing that and it's pulling from those images all right let's get back to the screen um now, if you wanted to get back with the girl with the umbrella, don't forget, we have all these layers are there. So, you know, this is probably not going to work, but I, why not? Let's just uh, see what I can do here. <laughs> just for fun. Um, I'm just going to go in here and I am going to make a selection around, make sure we select the right layer. There we go. And I'm going to select subject. So we're just going to select her. And um, why don't I just... This is not usually how I would usually do this with masks, but I'm just going to drag this to the very top. And obviously, you know, she's not going to appear uh, in the reflections. But if we did all this and we wanted to get our woman in it, you can still use traditional tools. So here's the thing, you know, you're going to be able to use your traditional Photoshop tools and your traditional skills along with this generative AI. So now obviously, you know, we've got the reflection there is not showing her. Now, if I was to redo this cement, it's possible it would. Let's let's try. It might, it might not. Uh, but I'm just going to regenerate over here and see if it does pick her, pick up her reflection. Uh, I'm not sure if it will or not. But let's see. And we're just waiting. Although the angle she's at, it might be, it'd be difficult to see that reflection anyway. Yeah, no, it got a little bit weird there. So that definitely uh, did not work. Let's try some other options here. Hmm. No, that, that didn't do that. So, all right, so we know that. Um, but, you know, so anyway, so you can mix. So this might be a point, you know, where, you know, if this if she was maybe more over here where the reflection actually would show, you might actually just create your own reflection. So the things that you know and the things that you've learned in Photoshop can still be combined with the tools and everything that we're using here. Now, I want to show you something else here that's really interesting. And um, let me just opening another image here. And I'm going to open this into uh, Photoshop. Okay, so this is interesting. So, you know, does it take into account reflections in the environment around the? Yes, it does. And uh, let me make that a little bit bigger. And let me see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection here. And I probably could just be using the rectangular marquee tool. I don't know why I'm, you know, making these odd shaped selections. Let's just do this. And let's see what happens if we add a fox. It's probably going to be a huge fox. Um, so it does take into account the environment around it when it's doing scaling, but it also takes into account the size of the selection. So if you want something giant, make a giant selection. Um, so let's see that. All right, there we go. And there's a fox. And let's have a look at a couple of other versions of it. That one's not so much. But look at this. Notice how it recognizes it's blurry back there, that it's out of focus. And, you know, I'm not trying to make this 
perfect, obviously, but look at this. It's blurry. It's out of focus. It knows that this is further off in the distance. So why don't we put another fox right next to her in an area that's in focus, and let's see how this does. I, I don't know about you guys, but I think this is pretty amazing. Um, my mind is blown by this. And what it's going to do, too, is... You know, so does that mean, you know, why, why we're waiting for that? Does that mean the the end of photography? No, it doesn't mean the end of photography um, because there's so many things like I just put a fox in there or I could put a dog in there. But what happens if you want to put your dog in there? You need to photograph your dog. You need to get that photograph or you're doing people. Um, this is not going to affect things like events. You know, you're doing weddings and sporting events and, and uh, you know, family reunions and, you know, or, or you're on vacation, you're taking a photograph of a place and you want to have that memory. So it's not going to replace photography. It's going to be something that's going to live alongside photography. Now, it is going to have an impact on retouching um, and retouchers, you know. Um, and unfortunately, you know, they're, they're probably are. It is going to affect some jobs, you know, like let's, let's not put our heads in the sand. Um, you know, that we're not going to need as many retouchers or as skilled retouchers for everything. For certain things, yes. Big companies, high-end things, I don't think that's really going to change. Um, but, you know, for, you know, smaller jobs, this is definitely going to impact. Uh, but it's also going to create an opportunity for a, a whole bunch of new people to come in and get work and get jobs. Um, there's going to be prompt artists, there's going to be AI artists. So my advice is, you know, no matter how you feel about this, learn it because you're going to need to know this because you're going to be competing. If you're doing this for a living, the people you're going to be competing with in the future are going to be using this and they're going to know it. So you need to know it. Um, and then it's going to give birth to a whole other type of people that are going to do composites. And I don't know if you guys, you know, one of the a fun thing, and maybe we'll do a little bit of that in a second, is to actually just build composites with this. It can actually be fun and it can actually give birth to an entire new type of art. Now, another question people ask about is, you know, what about the, um, you know, the, the ethics of this, right? So, you know, how do we know what's real? How do we know what's not real? Um, so if you look up, one of the things in it, it that, is not new with Adobe either. They've been working on this for, I don't know, I, I last time I was live at a Max, I missed last year because I was in New York with Google, but I think it was like three years before that or four years before that, I was at a Max and they were talking about the content authentication initiative. And originally that was just to show images that have been retouched or, you know, images, you know, have been composited. But now that's going into AI and Adobe are partner with a number of other companies and big players are in there now. Um, you know, NVIDIA's in there, Canon's in there, um, Nikon is in there. Um, at this moment, Sony or uh, Fuji are not in there at the moment. But I'm seeing a lot of big companies are part of this. And what they're doing is building this in, um, which means that these images are going to be tagged. So when these images are created, they're tagged with AI. And it knows it's AI, and this is going to be in at the hardware level. Some some manufacturers are building this in now. Like, um, you know, I, I don't want to say any companies because I'm under a lot of NDAs, but certain things that you're using are actually tagging that image and digitally letting it know that you are working on it or it's an AI image. And so um, look that up, and it's pretty easy to find that online. You'll find Content Authentication Initiative um, there's actually a website. Why don't why don't we let me see if I can pull it up here because I think this is this is definitely worth showing you guys something because because um, it's one of the big questions I'm getting right and you know so I'm addressing two of them right now where the image is coming from copyright um, and I know I'm still on the camera authentication let me bring this up we'll put you onto the screen let's pop the desktop up and so if we go to the content authentic uh, authenticity initiative this is basically here's the partners you can read everything you want but one of the things you can go here is go to verify and under here you're able to verify images and so you'll see this little tag and this image tells us okay everything about it here's the history of this image look at this it was size position paint tools imported assets combined assets and it's from adobe let's view more 
And if we look at this now, this is what it can tell us. This is what this is the image that was used. So here's the composite image. It was composite with two. Oh, this first one came from Adobe Stock. The second one came from social media. It was a screen capture. And this was composited in. So this, and you know, and being generated by AI is also going to be added there. So, you know, so they are trying really hard to do this responsibly. And I think it's really important. You know, it's not as exciting, but um, but it's definitely an important uh, part of, of, of what's needed. And if we look at the Fox here, look at this. We've got our in-focus Fox right here. Look at this. So see how this one was blurry is in the distance. This one was there and it's nice and sharp and in focus. And then we'll address the emotional um, impacts and how it affects us as artists. We'll address that in a second, but I want to do another image. Um, let me do, you know, I've got, I've got uh, so many images I want to do. I am going to be dropping a bunch of tutorials on this, uh, by the way, just to let you know, uh, let's open this image and I want to open this image here. Because I'm just not going to have enough time to cover everything in this live stream. So I already did one. I don't know if you guys watched it. Um, let me just bring up a web browser real quick. Because I want to show you some some stuff here really quick. Because I've got some more uh, resources for you guys that will really help you. Um, and so let's just look here. So the first one here, we're just, this is our live stream. This is us. Say hi to everyone on the live stream. Wow, 35. 5,000 people already crazy. Oh no, that was the one from yesterday. Okay, we got 608 watching. Okay, so this is the one I use a similar thumbnail. So this is the one that I dropped yesterday. Um, check out that tutorial. It's on YouTube under the Photoshop Cafe channel. You know, Photoshop Cafe, if you're not familiar with that, um, you can go in here and watch that video where I'm kind of doing a walkthrough. But then there's another, there's this other videos I really feel are important. I've got a ton of stuff here, but uh, there's one here on Firefly that's definitely worth checking out. But there's another one, where is it, that I just feel is really important. This one here. So this one, Tool of Terminator AI. Will AI replace photographers and artists? Um, I really hope that you'll take the time to watch this video because I'm really describing probably in a better way than I will now, you know, just how things have worked in history and how it's going to affect us. And is this the end? You know, does this make, you know, Paul's asking, does this make Photoshop redundant? And the answer to that is no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's just another tool that we're going to use alongside it. Because there's so many places that we're going to be using, you know, the tools that we know in Photoshop when there's specific things we want to do. Or the AI is not giving us what we want. You know, there's, there's just a lot of places where, you know, what you've learned is not obsolete. Um, you know, you're still going to be able to apply it. Sometimes we're going to be able to do it quicker with AI. Sometimes we're going to do it completely with some of the other tools, but the AI is also coming into the other tools um, to help us as well. You know, things like Photoshop and Lightroom. And I'll show you something here too, just to show you this before I jump into uh, this, this next demo um, and get some other so let's see, I'm just looking at the questions. Um, as a scientist can't trust anything. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting uh, comment that Robert Mark is making, and he's not wrong. Um, but it's not new, really, is it? Um, you know, it's funny because, I, you know, I'm seeing all the news, and I, I just put my face on the camera now because I just <laughs> definitely want to say something about this quickly. Um, you know, people, you know, it's like on the news, and they're hyping it up. Of course, they're going to they're gonna really hype it up and fear monger, just like they did with drones and everything else that's new. Um, you know, even Pokemon Go, you know, they demonized that because people were falling off cliffs and getting run over. There's always something, right? You know, a self-driving car, you know, a million cars have a wreck in a year. No one says anything. Three Teslas, probably more than that. But my point is they always make a point out of whatever's new. So there's going to be a lot of hype around AI and right now it's like oh you can't trust anything these images can be manipulated um you know like what is this suddenly new guys I've been manipulating images for 30 years in Photoshop and if you're skilled in Photoshop you're doing as good a job if not a better job than this AI right now it just takes more time so this is not new this has been around forever well you know not, you know for at least 30 years you know so this is not new but just the AI part of it, it's just easier to do it now. So, you know, all this like, oh, suddenly we can't trust anything. Why did you trust it 20 years ago? 
Photoshop was around then. Anyway, my point, moving on. So under Photoshop Cafe, I've got a ton of tutorials and, uh, and I just want to let you guys know under the free tutorials, I've added a new category. So you guys probably know all the categories if you're on the site and I've added one for AI art and tools. And this is just a place where I'm just going to put, you know, it's just basically just a category. So, you know, I've been doing a lot of video. I've been doing these videos on AI and Photoshop and Lightroom for three or four years now. Um, so this is just an easy place to find all those tutorials at once. And anything that I do in the future that's going to have anything to do with the AI is going to be under that um, that category and the category of be in the bar. Just so you know, when you're in Photoshop Cafe and you're looking for those, that's how to find them. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to go up there. Let's do... Um, couple of things here. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this one. And I just want to show you this really fast with clothing. I don't want to repeat what I did on my YouTube tutorial, um, but I do want to just kind of just touch on this because so far everything I'm doing here is completely different than what I'm doing on the tutorial. But I do want to show this one because this is the first one I played around with. When it, The very first thing I did with this it was like, what happens if I change this to a red t-shirt? And we hit generate. And um, let's see what we get here. And we're just waiting, waiting, waiting. So this is what you guys are going to, you're going to have to wait a little bit. But here I am complaining about waiting, right? How long would it have taken me to have done that by hand? I'm sorry I had to wait 20 seconds. <laughs> right. So it's not, I wouldn't call that a t shirt, but that definitely um, looks cool. Let's look at the second option. That's a mess. And third one's that's closer to a t-shirt, obviously strapless. Um, now, here's another thing. When you're using this, you'll see there's a little thumbs up and a thumbs down. If you want to help train the AI, AI and help it to get better, when you do something and you don't get... Oh, show the screen. Sorry. Um, my apologies. Let me go back. Thank you, Bruce. Got it. This is why Bruce is here, to remind me when I'm not showing my screen. <laughs> All right, so let's just quickly, um, what I'm going to do here, let's just do this again. I'm just going to make a selection around here, and I'm going to change this to a t-shirt. Let's make it a red t-shirt. All right, so forgive me for that. Thanks, Bruce. So I feel this constant buzzing and then it's Bruce like messaging me, show your screen. I always forget to show my screen. And... Terrible. He needs to put a sharker on my chair. Probably do. All right, there we go. Okay, so there we go. Red t-shirt. Once again, not really a t-shirt. That's more like a t-shirt. And that one, yeah. And so like, let's have a look. If I hit the alt and option key, we can see where the mask is. You know, so the mask is there. Yeah, if I wanted more of a, an actual, what we would call a traditional t-shirt, what I'd probably have to do is expand that selection. So let me do this because we not really giving her anything up there. To work. I don't know if this is going to make any difference, but I'm just, you know, I still think that looks pretty amazing. And I'm just going to fill this mask. But I do want to show you how, you know, I'm just selecting. So that area now is is selected. I'm just showing you how when you expand the mask, it will affect the result. Because obviously it created a strapless top because I didn't have the shoulders selected. So it was like, oh, it doesn't want me to do the shoulders. Um, it just wants me to do around here. And, um, and let's see what we get this time. So yeah, so all of these, oh, hang on a sec. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's more of a tank top, but that's definitely, there we go. This is definitely more, you know, now we've got something on the shoulder. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And if I wanted more of a shirt, I would just select more of the arms or whatever, and it would do that, you know. So that's pretty cool. All right. So here's the thing. I want to show you outcropping. Here's a photograph that I took. Uh, this is a panorama. So this was, I made it small, but this was a huge panorama that I shot in Hawaii a couple of years ago with my drone. And it was, I don't know. 50 images, 60 images, whatever. So this part of image generation is never going away. You're still going to do your photos. And by the way, if you enjoy doing photography and you're a hobbyist, then why should this take away from your joy of what you're doing, right? Just go out and enjoy it. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and it's the experience. It's getting out in nature. It's the experience of capturing that. And you want to, maybe you want to save it as memories. Or maybe you want to use it as, as, as a, you know, like here, we're going to, use it as a base to play with. So why don't we hit the crop tool? So one of the things we know about panoramas is they're always wide. 
So, did you ever wonder what would be down here? I did. I have no idea. Let's go and we're going to grab our magic wand tool. Okay, that we use the rectangular marquee tool at this point. I'm going to hit the shift key. And so what we've done is we've made a selection. Now I could do the top and the bottom separately. And here's a little tip. Because this is limited to 1K, you will get higher resolution if you do the top and the bottom um, separately. And in fact, why don't I demonstrate that right now? I'm just going to hit generate a fill and hit generate. And I'm just going to let it fill it with whatever it wants. And almost there. It's coming. It's coming. Progress, progress, progress. Working, working, working. And boom, look at that. I think that's pretty amazing, right? The top is definitely, you know, sharper because there's not a lot of re resolution. But look at the yucky low resolution down here is really showing. Kind of like C3PO, your parts are showing. I'm sorry, Star Wars nerd. Okay, let's go here. We're going to hit generate a fill. And we're just going to do the bottom. And this will give us a little bit more resolution. Now, remember, when this is finally ready and it goes into mainstream Photoshop, you know, instead of beta, because people are like, why is it in Photoshop beta? Why is it not in Photoshop? Well, one, it's not ready for commercial use. And number two, um, it's, yeah, look at that. See how the resolution is better? The resolution is not super high right now. And that's because of computational power is extraordinary what it uses. It's like data mining. You know, it's like, um, you know, like crypto mining, basically. It's, it's really CPU or GPU intensive. GPU, actually. All right, so let's look at the options. We've got one, two, three options there. Um, I think we're going to go for this option. Okay, so let's do the top here. And we're going to choose generative fill. But rather than just filling it, why don't we do dark, uh, moody clouds. I don't know what we'll get here, but or maybe we'll do stormy. Let's do stormy clouds. Uh, oh, by the way, if you want to change something, you have to go word by word. If you select and try to do it, it zaps everything, just so you know. So we're just going dark, stormy uh, clouds or sky. If you guys have any better ideas of what we should put in the sky, drop that into the chat. And uh, when we can do that. All right. Add a dragon. Rayal, I, I will add a dragon just because you asked. Can you resize the fill? Yes. Uh, but the thing is, if you resize that fill, you have to regenerate it because it won't um, it won't match anymore. So in order for it to blend in, you need to do it again. Oh, that's not bad. Two, three. I think I like kind of number two. What do you guys think? Uh, lightning. It was a dark and stormy night. Um, ah, let's try it. I, have, I don't think. Let's try it. It was a dark and stormy night and see what happens. Um. The night part might be a little weird because we're working on a daytime photo and it does look at that. But let's let's see where we go. Um, and let's see what we get here. And drum, 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 drum. And it's happening. All right. That's what we get there. It was a dark and stormy night. Oh, we got some good options there. My selection overlaps the image. Does this affect the generator of AA? Yes, you want to have... Uh, thanks for that, asking that question there, Thomas. You want to have a little bit of overlap. Um, and it will work better. I kind of like what we've got going there. And um, and someone said the lighting doesn't match. The lighting does match. It's coming from the left-hand side. And if we go back to the previous generation, which will still be here. If we go under the properties panel. Here we go, under the variations. Let's drag that out. And, um, you know, those, oh, hang on, let's get rid of that. And we're going to go here. Yeah, that lighting matches. If you look at the light, it's coming from the left. It's brighter on that side and it goes across. And there's the shadows on the right. Yeah, it's, it matches. It's funny because every time I do a tutorial, no matter how well I do the lighting and shadows, someone always says the lighting doesn't match. Now, I mean, admittedly, you know, it's not always going to match perfectly. So you do have... A valid point, but it's definitely um, doing a pretty good job, if you ask me. All right, so let's do some other stuff here. It's going to be kind of fun. Why don't we put 
Oh, this is going to blow your mind. I was messing with this yesterday. Before we do the dragon, check this out, guys. Check this out. This is going to, like, this is going to blow your mind. Waterfall. Check this out. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit excited. Um, and I will be posting more tutorials because I'm not going to be able to cover everything here. So make sure, you know, you're subscribing to our photo to the Photoshop Cafe channel. So if you're there on YouTube there and you see subscribe, hit that so you'll know when I do these new videos. Um, and also, let's look at some variations. You know, these are all right. I'm going to try something different. So... Um, yeah, so also join our mailing list if you can, uh, because I also post when I do new tutorials, I post those on there. Just to, if you want to stay up on those or just drop into photoshopcafe.com from time to time or the channel and you'll see, you know, new um, tutorials. All right, so we're trying three more. Okay, I like that one better. Or that one. I think I like that one. Maybe that's my favorite one. Why don't we throw another waterfall over here just for fun? We're going to go all the way down to the river. And we'll see if we can get more of a cascading waterfall. This is where you could go in and create a map painting, you know, like Lord of the Rings kind of thing. And then if you were doing a shoot with someone, you know, a cosplayer or something, or Lord of the Rings or whatever, you could literally create Rivendale or well, not Rivendale. What, where's the place in Lord of the Rings where the elves live? Is there a bigger nerd than me? A flying dragon? We are going to do a dragon. We will do a dragon. How does it affect the file size? It just affects the... Well, look at that. There's that cascading waterfall. Wow. Look at that. Looks just like the ones I saw in Hawaii. Actually, this is Hawaii. All right. So we've got um, some beautiful waterfalls there. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? How it just blends those in. Okay, let's, let's go further. Why don't we add a lake? I'm just going to grab this. And we're just going to grab that whole area. And we're going to type in lake. We will do dragons, but I got to warn you, it doesn't do dragons very well. Uh, can generative AI change the lighting on existing content? For example, change night to day. Um, I, it can, but and unfortunately, it also changes the content. So it doesn't just take the existing photograph, uh, Thomas, and change it to night. Um, but there's other AI filters, neural filters. Look at that. Adobe has other neural filters that will do that. Um, so I would use those. And that's where, you know, some of the other Photoshop stuff kind of comes in into play. Look at this. You know, isn't that amazing? Um, can it change the number of options it gives you? No, each time it's going to create three at a time. Uh, but if you change that prompt, it's going to give you three more. And those three will stay in the variations panel. All right, let's add a castle. Let's go over here. We're going to generate a fill, and then we will take some questions in a minute. We'll just do a couple more things here, and then we'll jump into questions and answers. So um, we can do that. Shire, no, Rick, the Shire is where the hobbits live, um, where the elves live. Was it Rivendell or Riven, Riven something? Uh, okay. Okay, so that's kind of the ruins of a castle. That's kind of cool. Why don't we add some more stuff here? Let's add a tower. And imagine like trying to find if you were compositing or building map paintings or whatever backgrounds. Can you imagine how much work it would take? You know, because when I'm doing compositing, it takes me longer to find. Um... Thank you, Rivendell. Thank you. Yeah, not Mordor. Mordor is where the orcs are. Um but uh, all right, very good. That, that was it. Thank you. So Rivendell. So Rivendale was closed, just Rivendell. Oh, look at this. This is kind of cool. It's like a Picasso tower or Leonardo da Vinci tower. Look at that. So we can add that. Why don't we put a fortress over here and then we'll throw some dragons in. Now, you can also describe these better. You could say modern. You could say, you know, steampunk. You could... Um, you know, do different things. But one of the things you don't need to do in here is say photorealistic um, or, you know, or some of those terms that you might use in Midjourney um, or even in Firefly because it knows it's going to match the style of the photograph that's here. Look at that. There's a fortress. That one looks medieval. This one actually looks before medieval. It looks like those really, really old ones. 
And there's one there. All right, so well, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can put a flying dragon. Now, I warn you, the dragons are not great at this point. So let's see what we can do. You don't have to tell it's a flying dragon. Just tell it's a dragon. And my guess is the dragons aren't great because there's not a lot of content in Adobe stock. There's probably not a lot of dragons for it to learn from and pull from. Um, of course, it could learn, you know, from looking at lizards and other creatures. And I could make a liar out of me and just create a perfect dragon right now. We'll see. Yeah, that's not quite what I was looking for. Let's go number two. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So that's more of a Chinese dragon. Um... So, you know, we could do a medieval dragon. I actually kind of like that, but it doesn't fit this particular. I don't even have to spell medieval. E-V-I-L. Is that it? Medieval dragon? I don't know. Um, so I'm going to put it in there. Welsh dragon. That's probably what I want. Thank you for that, Monty. Uh, can I change the size of the generated object? Leslie's asking... There we go. Thank you guys for helping me with my spelling. God dragon, that's funny. Let me grab the spelling there. And we'll just go back in and do that. Oh, it actually, it got it. Okay, so these, you know, like I was saying, the, the dragons are a little 3D because I think all the training assets that are in Adobe Stock are basically 3D models of dragons. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but I haven't taken a photograph of a dragon lately. Um, so that's kind of what we've got. But if we want to duplicate this, watch what happens. I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key. I'm going to drag a copy of this over here. Yes, you can make them smaller, but once again, you have to regenerate that dragon. So you're not going to get the same dragon. So what I've got to do is hit Generate, and now it's going to look at the environment, and it's going to create a new dragon. Now, this is where, you know, your skills, your Photoshop skills would come in, where you would just cut that out, and you would just, you know, make a copy of it, and, you know, you could, you know, start to combine your existing skills look at that there's a dragon running up that hill that's kind of cool well that one sitting there that's really cool i like that it's more of a lizard but that's super cool um yeah so as we can see there you know we can start to do dragons we can start to do all kinds of things so what i'm going to do right now though is i'm going to turn my attention to the question toothless dragon it's not going to do toothless um shervy one of the things i found um, so one of the things about the um, Adobe AI is it won't do famous people. Um, it's very restrictive on words. You can't do any kinds of weapons or soldiers or anything to do with violence. Um, it's it's a very, the keywords are very heavily curated, um, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, so, you know, you're not going to be creating all kinds of like anything that's copyrighted or you're not going to be able to put, you know, create Wonder Woman or The Flash or anything, you know, um, that's copyrighted. Of course, you know, Mid Journey doesn't care about that and you can create all of those over there. Um, an orca jumping out of the lake. Yeah, we could do that. Let's try that and drop your questions in there, guys. And I'm going to have a, a stab at answering your questions. Let's see if we can put an orca in here. Um, any thoughts on ways to help color like on those dragons not matching? Yeah, just select them and just use the, you know, the way you would colorize, you know, um, it's not too difficult. Like, let me show you. I'll, I'll let this generate and I'll show you how I would recolor. I like this dragon on the left, the one at the top. I'll show you how I would recolor that. And this is where, oh, okay, there's our orca. Oh, that's weird. Sometimes they get really weird. That one's cool. So that's the orca we're going with. It's a really, really big one. Um, you know, and we could select it and resize it and just cut and paste it. You know, we could just use traditional, you know, Photoshop blending to do that, um, which is once again where that those skills come in place. Okay, so if we're going to do, say, this dragon, I'm going to select this layer here, and I'm going to just use the... Um, why don't I rasterize this layer? So I'm actually going to go in here. I'm going to rasterize this layer. So now it's a pixel layer. And now when it's a pixel layer, that means I can use all my traditional tools. Now, maybe another time I'll do a, a, a you know, a, a training where we mix traditional Photoshop with the AI. But this is where, you know, like what we know doesn't go out of style. So I'm going to select the color here in this dragon. So what I'm doing is in the properties in the hue saturation, 
I'm choosing a color and now it's creating this, it's clamping around the region of colors to be changed. Because if we look at this, you know, part of it is the background, but it won't change the background color. We can change just the, um, that area. Notice it's getting the rest of the image. Don't worry about that. We can take the saturation down. And let me just do something really quick. I'm gonna turn the saturation up and really bright so I can see it. And I'm just gonna adjust over here. So I wanna make sure I'm selecting the whole dragon. There we go. And notice how I'm adjusting the range of colors that are being selected. All right, so we've got the dragon, good. All right, let's so bring the saturation back to a reasonable level. And, you know, we could play around with some colors, you know, maybe make it darker. But this is essentially how you would change that. And um, because it's working on a layer mask, all we need to do is just select around our region there. And then we can invert it, Command-Shift-I for invert. Now we've selected everything but our dragon. And I can just fill that with black. And then what that does is it just everywhere else that had the similar color, it just puts it back to where it was. And now we're just affecting the color of that dragon. So that's how you would recolor pretty much anything in here. Um, just kind of using those traditional methods that we're used to. Um, all right. So fire breathing dragon. Yeah. You know what I would do for something like that for a fire breathing dragon. One of the things I've found that works well is rather than trying to do a fire breathing dragon, because I would have to make the selection around this whole area. So what I would do is I would just kind of go here and make sure you're working on the top layer because it will generate underneath, by the way. And then we could just do uh, flame or fire, you know, you could put flame and, fl flame and fire, whatever in there, and then it will start to just kind of build that up. And then the nice thing about it, too big on different layers, you can use blending modes, you can use opacity, all the traditional things. Okay, so it's a, you know, a little cartoony. Um, we could try, try fire. Or you could take photo. And once again, you, there's nothing stopping you compositing photos in here as well. So you can mix and match the media. And this is kind of what I, I, I anticipate seeing in the future, is we're going to see this incorporated with everything else. And um, that one looks pretty cool. There you go. I mean, it's still a little cartoony, but it's definitely a lot better. And you could, you know, because it's on its own layer, you could go in and use blending modes. Mm, not going to work on that, but we could drop the opacity down a little bit. You know, and you could, you could play around with it. But once again, you know, I think mixed media is what we're going to see where people are mixing photography, illustration, digital art. 3D, um, generative art, and just kind of mixing it all together um, just to kind of free your your creativity. All right, so um, try flamethrower. It might not do that because that's considered a violent word. So there's certain things, you know, it's just not doing great at the moment. So let's have a look at this. We'll try flamethrower, but I don't think it'll work because... It's blocking all kinds of weapons, but so it might generate it and give a warning up the top saying it, it's been removed. So we'll see. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. There we go. We got a we got a flamethrower. <laughs> we literally have a flame a flamethrower. That's hilarious. Look at that. All right, there we go. So um, yep. If you wanted a flamethrower, it it took you literally. That's kind of funny. Um, all right, so what else have you guys got here? Any other questions that you guys want to ask? Um, pop them in here. You know, um, do me a favor, hit that like button. Um, you know, let's get it up because we've got many more viewers here than we have likes. And it just helps with the YouTube algorithm. That's why we always ask about that. And also, once again, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And uh, you won't miss any of the other tutorials or live streams that we're going to be doing. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, the, the elephant in the room, right? The elephant in the room is how is this going to affect us as creators? Because, you know, I'll be honest. Let, let's be honest. We've all, first time I ever saw generative art, my knee-jerk reaction was despair, I was immediately in despair. I was like, all this, you know, all these years that I've spent learning art and learning this craft, 
you know, it's, it's all gone. It's irrelevant. It doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. It's just, it's gone. I've been replaced by a robot. But then I noticed that when I started using it more, I realized there's a lot of restrictions, a lot of things it can't do. Um, and everything, it, you know, it can generate, because here's the thing, you need a person to tell it what to do. You need a person to guide it. You give one person some clip art and it's a piece of paper with a bunch of clip art all over it, right? You know, just consider this elaborate clip art. Then you give somebody else clip art and they create this beautiful composition. So taste, compositional skills, storytelling, soul, emotion, all these things the machine can't do. You know, I've looked at AI generated photographs of people and you look into their eyes and there's nothing. Whereas, you know, you're photographing people, you know, you're eliciting certain emotions out of them. And, it, and it's, it might be a twinkle in the eye or something like that, that AI can't, you know, the person looks confident. They look afraid. They look fearful. They look happy. They look joyful. You're like, oh, that looks like a nice person. Oh, and you're drawn to that that person because they, they, they seem like a good person. And these are the things that AI is not able, you know, to generate. Um... The other side of it, you know, is, you know, jobs. Are we going to be replaced as artists? You know, does that mean that, you know, I, I think there's very little photography is going to be replaced with this because generally when people hire a photographer, they're hiring a photographer because they want to shoot their family. They want to shoot their house. They want to shoot their dog. They want to shoot their event, their office, their meeting or, you know, um, you know, there's something specific that they want want to photograph. So that type of photography is not going to go away. Um, to a certain degree, some of that's already been displaced by, by mobile phones. Um, and change is inevitable. Uh, but then when I started to realize the limitations of the AI and what it can do and what it can't do, is I realized that, you know what, there is still a future for creatives. There is still a future for artists. And I'm just starting to see it now more as a tool. You know, when you first see it, it's overwhelming. Like all these things it can do. It's like, wow, look at all the things it can do. But what you're not seeing is all the things it can't do. And I'm just doing a demo here. I'm just saying, oh, throw a castle on it. What if I wanted a very specific type of castle? Like the castle from Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. You know, you've seen the cover with the guitar castle. It can create elaborate things, but it can't create specifically what you have in your imagination, in your mind. So you need to prompt it. You need to help it. You need to guide it. But then sometimes you just need to create it. So it can be good for things like um, idea generation. It can be good for retouching. Definitely retouching is an area we're going to see a big effect where it is going to do a good job of retouching. And, you know, that means that some people right now who are retouchers would have to consider maybe, you know, doing something else um like maybe becoming photographers or becoming ai artists or 3d artists or prompt artists so throughout history we've always had different inventions and i don't want to go and repeat what i did in, in the video but when the camera came out people were artists were horrified oh no the computers come out now we have a camera it's going to replace it's not real art and cameras were hated on if you guys remember you know even before digital you know, like traditional artists hated cameras and it was like photography is not real art and photography really had to fight to find its place to be accepted. And some jobs were lost, but whole new jobs were created. Companies were created, Kodak, Fuji, you know, and they, they created film, they made film and then there was development houses and whole cottage industries were created around photography. Whole, you know, all, all, you know, photography departments and the chemicals, the film, the cameras, the lighting, everything. And then along came digital photography, same thing, you know, oh no, digital photography, that's the end of photography. Um, you know, everyone's going to lose their jobs. And guess what? Yeah, all those film houses went out of business. Those printing houses went out of business. But now we have digital printing houses and we have new things that have come out and new businesses and new industries. Photoshop, digital art, you know, it's being used in entertainment. All these new industries have come out of this. Um, and, and it's the same thing going forward. It's not going to be different this time. It's always the same. 
And the story I do like to tell, and it's been mentioned here, I think Andrew might have mentioned it, and, and I'll answer questions, so I'll just I'll finish this in a second. But, um, you know, like you've, you've heard the stories about Luddites, right? Let me just quickly give you a high-level view of that. So the Luddites, this was textile workers. This is when machinery was invented, when we began the machine age. And people were absolutely terrified that machines were going to replace us. We're not talking about robots or Robocop. We're talking about machines. The weaving machines were water-driven. They were windmills. The river would go and it would turn this this wheel with the water power and it would turn this little spindle. And that spindle would move this um, textile weaving machine up and down. And they could weave faster. Now... At this point, the textile workers were highly skilled and highly paid. And so, of course, you know, they went against it. They fought against it. And they, you know, the legendary uh, Ned Ludd was the guy, you know, who's supposed to lead the, the Luddites, which is why they were called Luddites, because they were led by a guy called Ned Ludd. Now, by the way, Ned Ludd never actually existed. He was actually just created as a figurehead. And then they used, would go to the factories and they would break into the factories and they would destroy the equipment and they would break the machinery and try to stop, you know, what was coming. They even said at one time, the British army, there was more soldiers fighting against the Luddites in the UK than there were fighting against Napoleon at one time, at that particular, at the same time. So it, it was a big movement. But in the end, progress won. And, you know, were there casualties? Absolutely. You know, what happened, though, for humanity is now we get clothing very cheap. You know, back in the day, people were lucky to own one set of clothes. Now we've got clothes everywhere. Blankets, you know, like this, these things are abundant now and much cheaper and much more accessible. Um, and, you know, these textile industries grew much, much bigger and ended up employing much more people. Now, a lot of the people didn't have to be as skilled. And some of the highly skilled people did lose their jobs because they went to these factories, applied for jobs, and they, they were told, you know, hey, you're too skilled, you're going to get paid too much. There are going to be casualties. Now, the smart thing that they should have done is open their own factories. And that's where I'm going to jump to today. The smart thing to do is just realize the toothpaste is out of the tube. AI is here. It's not going away progress is not going away so you need to learn to leverage it learn it master it and then use it to build your business and if you're a hobbyist and you like the art of creating and doing things by hand then do it you know you don't have to use the ai if your joy and your pleasure comes from the process of creating then create and create by hand and this or use this you know whatever Whatever you want, but it shouldn't take away that joy of creating, right? So, you know, so anyway, that's that's my thing. You know, so yeah, we, we had the industrial, industrial, we've had so many revolutions, right? We've gone through the atomic age, you know, the stone age, the invention of the wheel. You know, those guys that used to carry Cleopatra on the those poles or whatever, you know, the chair bearers or whatever they were called, throne bearers. Yeah, they, they got displaced by, uh, you know, by the wheel. And now there's a, chariot you know or there's a, a motor car driving them you know or a limousine right so no what are we going to do we're going to destroy the limousines because we want to carry important people on chairs you know like progress just happens and now we're in the you know the information age we're kind of at the sunset of the information age now where it's morphing into the ai age um and that's just where we are as humanity is it going to be good is it going to be bad uh, you know no one no one knows but with each one of these ages, the standard of living has actually gone up for humans. Right now, the average person, even the broke person, is living in more comfortable house and eating better food than Louis V, the king, was. You know, like, so our our lives are getting better. So anyway, that's uh, that's saying about that. I'm, you know, I'm done with my rant, but I just really wanted to say that just if anyone's feeling discouraged, I don't want you to feel discouraged. Feel encouraged. Um, you know, this is, you know, it's not, this is not taking away, this is not going to take away your ability to create. You know, it's still there. And that joy you get from creating is still there. Now, realistically, if I could go back in time and AI was never invented, 
would I, I don't know. I haven't, you know, I, I, that's something I think about where, you know, so it's not like I'm here preaching like, Oh, AI is the greatest thing. Yeah. 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 But I'm also not saying, you know, destroy it, get rid of it. I see it as a tool that I should utilize and I should learn and I should use to make me more productive and to help me with my art, to help me with, you know, my business and also to help me, you know, with, with the hobby side of it as well. You know, so it's a tool. And I think we just have to, you know, rather than, you know, fighting it or getting frustrated or getting angry or getting sad. I mean, yes, we're going to some of us are going to have these emotions. We're going to have to work through. But at the end, I think everything is going to be all right. And uh, I'm an optimist and, and I'm optimistic. And guys, we're going to be OK. You know, this is this is going to be good. And a lot of people and I'm, I'm saying this because we have, you know, an amazing amount of people in our community. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because, you know, you see our subscribers where we have 330,000 subscribers or something. That doesn't tell the whole story. Just last year alone, we had 300 hours, 300,000 hours, sorry, 300,000 hours of content consumed just on our, just on the Photoshop Cafe YouTube channel. 5 million views. You know, so, you know, and then Photoshop Cafe, the website, it gets just as much traffic, if not more traffic than YouTube. So the reason I'm saying that is not to be like, oh, you know, oh, look, I'm saying there's a lot of people listening and there's a lot of people watching. And I want to let you know that you're being heard as well. You know, I, I hear you. And then there's other people that are excited and they're like, yes, this is the greatest thing. You know, and I don't have to talk you off the ledge because you're like, yeah, let's go. Um, you know, so I, I just want to make sure that everybody realizes that, you know, this is this is this is good. This is good for everyone. All right. So that's my my little rant there about that. So any uh, technical questions or anything like that, um, let me know if you guys are part of the regular crew. Drop drop a hello in here, and um, we're gonna end the official part of the uh, the stream right now. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> um, um, yes, and it will be posted. Yes, the replay will be up as soon as we're done with this. Uh, the replay will be live here on the YouTube channel. So you guys can come back and watch it whenever you want. And I would encourage you to check out some of those other resources that I mentioned because it will help you. And, um, you know, so here, here's to a, you know, a future, a good future. So anyways, good to see some regulars here in the house. Orcapes, good to see you. Warren, good to see you. Um, Bob, good to see you. Yvonne. Uh, Stuart Greenberg, good to see you there. I know some people, uh, some of our regulars, you know, when we did the live from lockdown, 100 episodes, most of you guys were here for every single episode. You didn't miss a single one, which was amazing. Um, Stan, good to see you. Um, and, you know, some of them like uh, Marcy here is new for the live streaming. So I hope I hope you found this interesting. We've done 100 episodes. Those are the, the archives are there on Photoshop Cafe. If you go to photoshopcafe.com and under the free tutorials, you click on live streams, they're all there. Or you can go, you know, on our YouTube channel, you'll you'll see them. They're, they're all there under the live stream, stream tab. So you can watch any of those. They're, they're going to be there forever. And um, and one of the other questions that people have been asking me, thank you, Heather. This is a superb presentation. Thank you. Um, some, of, some of the other things that people have been asking about is, you know, LFL, which... For those of you who were a part of that, you know, that was, that was live from lockdown. So during COVID, when we were in lockdown, we started a weekly live stream as a way for the community to come together. And we did those live streams. And then I said, you know, at the end of that, that something we would do something going forward. Now, obviously, it's not going to be called live from lockdown anymore. Um, I called this Photoshop Cafe live. Maybe we'll do more. At the moment, I don't feel like I have the the energy or, or should I say, or just the time right now to do these weekly. Cause that was a lot guys. It was a lot to do weekly. And, uh, and, and I really enjoyed the community. I really enjoyed doing the, the presentations, but I got, you know, I was getting a little tired um, towards the end of that. So maybe we should consider maybe doing something like monthly or something like that and just kind of see where we go. How would you guys feel about that? If we were to do like a, a monthly stream, um, is that something you guys would be into uh let me know there in the chat um 
And uh, Andy is asking, will I be presenting at Adobe Max this year? I have not been invited to speak at Max um, as far as I know. So uh, if there's any questionnaires or any anyone suggesting who would you like to recommend for a speaker, put my name down. But so far, um, I haven't heard anything. And part of the reason for that is my main contact, the lady I've been working with at Adobe, has retired. So I guess I've got to meet some new people. Um, so we'll just uh, see what happens there. Monthly would be great. Some people see that. Um, okay, uh, thank you. And um, thank you for all the kind words there, everybody. Uh, Marcy would come. Good, great. Yvonne, TX Duggan, Monthly's cool. Warren D, good to see you. I think I already said hello to you. Um, monthly would be great, says uh, Kathy, Donna, Mark. You guys like that idea? Eduardo, did I say your name wrong? I'm sorry if I did. Um, Al says, thanks. This is worth his time or worth their time. Um, hope to see more as AI develops. Have a great meeting. Um, um, yes, one monthly. Monthly would be great. Would enjoy a new version of LFL. Says Polkadot Studio. Good to see you in the house. Um, yeah. So it looks like you guys are down for that. So it was good to see you all. We had a, a good good group this week. And I think I'm just going to sign off, guys. So, um, you know, check out the resources on photoshopcafe.com. I'm adding new tutorials every single week. Also check them out on YouTube. Um, and also I'm starting, if you guys are on TikTok or Instagram Reels, I'm dropping some, um, some just shorts on there. So I'm going to do some shorts on YouTube as well where maybe I'll play around with some AI and just do quick one minute just kind of um, short demos as well as the weekly tutorials which we're going to continue and the written part of those are also on photoshopcafe.com so if you want those the videos are there and the written part so I, I pretty much always do that so thanks guys till next time i'll see you at the cafe <laughs>